visiting all the points on the map and meeting hundreds of people along the way. fish and shrimp who call it home. Fundozhe, a deep sea submersible made in China and manned by Chinese scientists, dived to a depth of 10,909 meters. Less people have been here than have flown to the moon. China is one of only a handful of countries that have made it into the Mariana Trench, and it's achieved it in record time. From project launch to successful dive took just five years. At the China Ship Scientific Research Center of China Shipbuilding Corporation in the city of Wuxi, I met Ye Tong, the main designer of this now legendary underwater vehicle. The design and engineering team led by Yeto has achieved a series of technological breakthroughs in buoyancy material development and processing, as well as acoustic communication and positioning, without which a dive to close to 11,000 meters would be difficult. In fact, just 10 years ago, such a dive would have been unthinkable for the Chinese deep sea manufacturing industry. Jialong Hao is the first deep sea dive vessel in China. Its depth is 7,000 meters. From 1902, it was in 2012, it was in 7,062 meters. It was the world's record for the time. 这个是深海勇士，作业深度呢最大是四千五百米。我们花了八年的时间，在国内设计、制造、测试它。现在它也投入了使用，每年有一百次的下潜，非常的频繁。这个就是我们奋斗者。奋斗者。When Jiaolong was designed and built, around three quarters of its parts were China-made, with the rest supplied by overseas specialists. Eight years later. Shanghai Yongshi was 95% local. Fast forward to Fundozhe, and 100% of this groundbreaking submersible is almost domestically sourced. Quite something. Like our most important component, the Zhairan Qiu Chang, its design and design is in Shenyang, the design is in Shanxi, the design is in Sichuan, the design is in Henan, the design is in Hainan. We are looking at it from the design. 到很复杂的外形的呃应力的一些检测，从北到南，中国跑了一个大圈。China now is close to the leadership, and as you reach the forefront, you need to create most of the knowledge that you will be using. So you cannot expect from other countries. It's easy to see in recent years, and UNESCO confirmed this in their science report in 2021, that alongside economic development, China is increasing. 
increasingly emphasizing investment in scientific research. In the five years from 2014 to 2018, China contributed 44% of the global increase in research spending. But what do national research stats really mean? Who's doing the research and who's paying for it? Let's take Fundo Zhe as an example. The project was led by the China Ship Scientific Research Center, China Shipbuilding Corporation, but they were joined by 30 or so research institutions and universities, 60 enterprises, and nearly a thousand researchers. If it holds for other projects, and I'm told it does, bringing together enterprises, universities, and research institutions looks to me like a model for rapid expansion of research capacities. At the end of 2021, Xiao Xiang, a professor at the School of Life Sciences and Biotechnology in Shanghai Jiao Tong University, traveled on Fundo Zhe down to the Mariana Trench. His research focuses on microbial life in the deep sea environment, and multiple dives to the site have produced some extraordinary results. Bonkola in December 2021, Professor Xiao and his fellow researchers co-sponsored the Marianas Consensus, an initiative to establish a standardized platform system for deep-sea scientific research to achieve long-term preservation and sharing of samples and data, and to support international big science cooperation around the abyss. They could only allow the essential molecules to move in while the microbes could not move in or out. Could you tell us more information about cyanobacteria you isolated? Uh, but we, we also got some of the isolation. From the study of microscopic life forms on the floor of the ocean to the management of macro environments that are very much on land, let's turn to another area where tech innovation is transforming China's prospects. This is Shanghai, international metropolis and China's largest economic center, and my home for the last two decades. Over 25 million people live here, with me. Numbers here get a little crazy. The city has over 5,000 kilometers of roadway. Public transportation carries more than 14 million people per day. And it manages this with the help of some remarkable technology. So remarkable that in 2020, Shanghai took the title World Smart City at the annual Smart City Expo. World Congress in Barcelona. And the City Award 2020 is for Shanghai. The first time a Chinese city has won. But just how smart is this city of ours? Jin Bo Wen lives in Songjiang District in southwest Shanghai and needs to commute 50 kilometers every day to his job in the city center. The city's extensive metro network is the obvious choice for his commute. I'm down here too most days. Shanghai Metro Network currently has 20 lines and a total length of over 800 kilometers. 
I say currently because new lines are opening all the time. The world's largest metro system, it has 505 stations and more than 7,000 trains carrying over 10 million people every day. So it might come as a surprise to know that trains here are on time almost 100% of the time. How that is achieved is an intriguing question. I went to the Shanghai Metro Consolidated Operations Command Center, a complicated name for a complicated job, to get a snapshot of how the network operates. My guide was Wang Daqing, Chief Technology Officer at the center. This Every metro line, station and train compartment are equipped with data points. A total of 30,000 points continuously generate data and transmit it to the center for aggregation, meaning that any emergency can be detected in real time. As Shanghai Metro lines extend service later into the evening and earlier in the morning, some of them running for 20 hours a day now, Maintenance of trains is an increasingly serious issue for staff. Ding Yaqi, Deputy Chief Engineer of Train Maintenance, explains how they do it with the help of a new friend. Automation and artificial intelligence, robots, may alleviate the burden on manpower and potentially also reduce human error. Our friend is now under trial operation, and if he if it proves effective, he, it, will be applied across the whole system. In terms of digital governance, it means that government use technology to achieve good governance. In this new age, we need to use digital technology, cloud computing, uh, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, uh, 5G. We can collect the data, analyze data, share data, open data. Shanghai has one of the most automated metro systems in the world. And with an app, I can find out where to queue for the least crowded carriage. There are other apps that tell me how long till my bus arrives. I get typhoon warnings on my phone before the high winds hit the city and can trace back to the farm where the food on my table comes from. Apps like these rely on the kind of data collected by the Shanghai Urban Operation Management Center, the brain of the mega city's digital governance. I met Xu Hui Li, Deputy Secretary General of Shanghai Municipal People's Government, to find out how it works. This is Wow,那为什么这里屏上刚刚出来这个红色的呢?就是你现在看到这个系统呢,是我们整个城市的高速路和所有的桥和隧道的实时动态的运营管理系统。你看到了红颜色是什么呢?在我们上海的G1503交环
，我们使用的数据都是按照最小必要原则。我们刚刚出台了上海的数据立法，对于谁可以用什么样的数据，我们有了规定。第二个呢，我们对于这个呃涉及到隐私的数据的，从保存到共享到交换，以及到进入到应用，我们有一套非常完备的，一套这个审批和管理的流程。Whatever worries there may be, it does appear that the future of China is digital. In the government's 14th five-year plan, the words digitalization and data appear dozens of times. And in the coming five years, the country aims to increase the proportion of digital industries as a proportion of GDP from seven and a half to ten percent. They talk about constructing a digital government to serve the digital society via digital technologies. My next stop on this journey takes me to the forefront of medical tech. The human brain is made up of around a hundred billion nerve cells, neurons. To complete moves as simple as walking and sitting, several million neurons are activated at the same time. But when the brain goes wrong, its sheer complexity makes fixes hard to achieve, and science has struggled to make significant advances in treatment. Now, the world's social burden is the most serious problem: old diseases. The more serious problem is we don't have medicine. If we don't have advances in treatment and treatment, we will have a huge gap. 我们将来二十年之后，我们的医疗系统要崩溃的。全世界都是这样情况。One of the most common serious neurological diseases is epilepsy, and it affects almost 10 million people in China. For 30 percent of patients, medicines are ineffective at keeping it under control. 15-year-old John is one of them. His epilepsy symptoms started five years ago. Today. Zhang is being taken by his father to see a doctor at the second affiliated hospital, Zhejiang University School of Medicine. Come in. How many months have you started? From 10 years ago, I started two days. At that time, I remember you had four or five times. Four or five times. Now, does it affect your life? No impact on your life. In April 2021, Zhang and two other patients with epilepsy came here for a special new type of brain surgery to effectively control the seizures that for many people can happen at any time of day or night. A tiny device was implanted in their brains. He from the brain from the brain to the brain to the brain to the brain. There is a process. Like when we have a brain, when the brain comes up, we have to be aware of it. 那么我们及时给他一个，也是一个电，以电来抵抗电，把它一次掉了，就相当于我们讲的说给他安装一个反导系统。Professor Zhang Jianming, Chair of Neurosurgery at the hospital, is the head of Zhejiang University's Brain Computer Interface (BCI) clinical translation research team. He's been working on the practical application of BCI since 2010. This closed-loop nerve stimulator was developed by Professor Zhang and his team. Though implanted inside the skull itself, it can be charged wirelessly and transmits the brainwave data via Bluetooth. This device is our own design, with our own digital rights protection. The companies on the market, we should say, are the second. There are around 24 million people with physical disabilities in China. According to the China Disabled Persons Federation, accounting for one third of the global sum, BCI technology opens up the prospect of being able to deliver life-changing advances in mobility to more of them. In 2018, Gu Yue graduated from college, hoping to start a career in finance, but a work-related injury on the family farm set him on a new path. You can tell us what 感觉是什么样子？就就那第一次体验，然后就把我震撼到了。我我就发现，原来真的有这样的一个东西，以前一直找找不着，就有一种感觉，就是什么，我手回来了，我能够有机会就是控制它，像控制自己手一样。我觉得我能够像恢复到以前一样。
Bionic hands are another payoff of BCI technology. This one was listed by Time magazine as one of the 100 best inventions of 2019. Wow. Can you show me how, how it works? Uh, so this is uh, like the neural, sig neural signal and the muscle signal uh, sensing device. Okay. And uh, I'll put it on your forearms. Okay. And I'll do some very simple training. And uh, with about one minute training, and you can start to control this. Okay. So maybe you can do a fist. And also release. And so basically the algorithm and the sensors, you know, are learning you know, what you are thinking, how to move the each right. individual finger. And as I can see in the background, there's kind of the matrix happening here. Yeah. yeah, there are millions of calculations, <laughs> you know, per second right. uh, under the, the system. New technology has always been at the heart of emerging industries, right back to Europe's industrial revolution, and earlier still with the invention of the printing press. This latest burst of Chinese innovation in the spheres of big data analysis and brain science are set to change the future of our cities and perhaps even the ways we connect our minds and bodies. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, China's spending on research and development in 2020 accounted for 2.4% of its GDP and the number of scientific researchers here has ranked first in the world for the last eight years. Whatever our own dreams for the future of technology, it's clear that China is set to play a major role. It's not only about young people and uh, rich people, it's also about vulnerable groups, elderly people, disabled people, and women, children. China will be able to lift its technology positions and will have a better communication and exchange with the whole world. Now you give incentives and you let people to imagine stuff because innovation is not ordered from the top. Innovation happens bottom up. China has to go through a cultural change uh, to enable innovation to work and to enable the brightest and the most aggressive and the most enthusiastic, the entrepreneurs, have those ideas. The world is experiencing Chinese innovation uh, for the first time and having to face up to it. Between US and China, they have to find a way to live together, to live, to coexist, 